Okay, for this last video, I want to show you a few things that you might want to try, but they are completely optional and they work better or worse with some of the, the different backgrounds, containers, and uh, elements. And so the stage that you're seeing for the project uh, right now is perfectly acceptable. It's, um, it's perfectly fine. You do not have to do any of these extra things unless you want to. And you might find yourself experimenting and then wanting to choose change. I would say in this case, the only thing you can really change is the background. Uh, but feel free to play and experiment. There's never a right or wrong way to do a skills practice. The idea is that you will practice and experiment and, you know, play around with the things that you are most interested in. And so if I grab one of the apples, I'm going to toggle it on and off. It doesn't matter which one for now. If you select any layer and hit the FX button at the bottom of the layers panel, you can launch layer effects. It's called the layer styles dialog box, but the thing that you're applying are called layer effects. And you can add maybe a drop shadow. It doesn't matter which one you click because when you click it, you will get the layer styles dialog box and then you can modify. Now, obviously this uh, drop shadow does not make the design look better. And so you can experiment with all the different settings that are available. So when drop shadow selected, I see all the drop shadow options. So I can lower the opacity of my shadow. I can change the layer blending mode, uh, which you can click through to see what happens. With black, it's kind of interesting. Not a lot happens with black. Um, you can also change the distance, make it further away or closer. You can decrease the spread or how far the, the shadow expands. You can increase or decrease the size of your drop shadow. And so you can make it a little bit more subtle. So right now there's a drop shadow and if we look at it really closely, we can kind of see there's something a little special about it, but it doesn't look too overwhelming. Let's grab a different apple, this apple here, and let's apply a different layer effect. So click the FX button at the bottom, and maybe we want to do a bevel and an emboss, which I would say is probably not the best option for the apples, but maybe for your container. Um, when you are applying a bevel and emboss, you'll have the bevel and emboss selected, and then all the settings on the right are for bevel and emboss. So you can do an inner bevel or an outer bevel, uh, right now, the bevel is, is quite large, so I'm going to scale the bevel down and experiment with different options that you can see. Um, the bevels won't work so well on the, the fruit, but they would do better on the box. Okay, um, let's do one more. So I'll select this apple here. And maybe we want to do, let's do a pattern overlay because then you can see how layer blending modes work. When you have a pattern overlay, it basically puts a picture, a repeating picture over your image. And so you can click through here and you can find, you know, the pattern of your choosing. So maybe I want just to create a weird trippy underwater feel. You don't want to just leave it like that because obviously it doesn't look great. And so what you can do is you can increase or decrease the scale of the pattern. And so if I go out really far, you can see it's a repeating pattern. But you can zoom in until you find the texture that you're looking for. And then what you want to do is you want to change the layer blending mode to affect how that pattern interacts with your apple. And so you might do multiply. You might do lighten, you might do difference, whatever floats your boat. And then I would always recommend coming in and lowering the opacity because now it kind of looks like I have a, a weird textured apple as opposed to a bright blue trippy apple. And so you can use these to create interesting effects. You can even say that you kind of like that effect, but maybe you want to see what the different patterns look like on that. These trees have different effects. Um, you can also always hit the option flyout menu and you can import patterns, but that's a, another lesson for another day. One of the things that I like to do is to put a drop shadow on the container. So with the container selected, we can hit the FX button and choose drop shadow. It will remember the last setting that you had for your drop shadow. So we might need to make the size and the opacity 
of the drop shadow bigger. I usually will kind of blow it out so I can see it. You can increase the distance. The further away from your object it looks, the more it looks like you have like a spotlight on your design. You can change the angle that the sun is shining on your box. Just make sure if you do that, if you put drop shadows, you use the same angle for all of the, the objects in your box. Okay, that is a wrap on the demo for Skills Practice 6. Uh, again, you do not have to use the eraser, the selections, um, the layer effects, etc. I would like you to experiment with them, but they are not uh, mandatory things for this Skills Practice at this point in the semester.